Hi, everybody. It's your two poly chicks, Cindy and Tiffany. And as you see, we have another special guest today. We have Seth Moses Kane, who's an author from Brooklyn. He's 42, married, and has four children. Four he children. Actually, yeah. <laughs> four children. Kids. But um, he's an author of a variety of books, and one of his specialties is erotica. So if you don't know, today's topic will be about the adult entertainment industry. So we'll discuss a lot of the political implications behind it, um, some disparities within the, the industry, and just overall the topic and how it has morphed from the beginning to the end, and just how it plays into our daily lives like we always say you know porn i'm sorry not porn <laughs> porn is porn is everywhere <laughs> and, and I, was say, I, I just corrected it, it, behind the scenes i was telling cindy i said you know what we should do uh, <laughs> should adult entertainment instead of just porn because it's not only porn but adult entertainment is everywhere you see it in commercials you see it in books you see it in advertisements so it's everywhere so we're going to discuss that today and we just want to say hi hi seth hi cindy how are you guys doing hi I'm Hello. doing great. How you doing? Seth, how you doing? How are you all doing today? Good. Good, good, good. good. Really? Well, you, you know we always say <laughs> sex sells. So yes. you see the beer commercials, you see a tire commercial, or you see a sex. So we want to talk a little bit about it. And hopefully from this, we also wanted to have an adult entertainment actress or actor. So that's mm -hmm. where we were heading with this topic. So, Seth, my first question, I always wonder, me and Tip always talk about it. Why do people, why do you think people watch and read erotic art? Let's say watch porn, watch adult books. And why do people do that? Why do you think they watch and read it? What do they get? Oh, well, I guess uh, one of the uh, the main reasons would be that it was, uh, it's been such a taboo here in this country for so long. Um, we live in a country where sex does sell and the imagery is everywhere, but it's still very difficult for a lot of people to talk about it or to even express their own feelings about it. So uh, movies, television shows, books gives you an ability to uh, explore aspects of yourself that are very important, but that uh, usually it's all internal and you're not able to share it with other people. Yeah, that I, I agree. It's like it's something that you can do in your bedroom without anyone knowing, without anyone seeing or judging. So that, that that's true. I, I agree. And and it's also a pleasure aspect, Cindy. I, I feel that people watch it. That's the first and foremost, in my opinion. And that's why I watch it because I, I get pleasure from seeing it. You do, <laughs> Tim. You get pleasure. I get pleasure. Well, I mean, I might be pleasuring myself or someone else but I get pleasure from uh -huh. <laughs> much uh -huh. my, but I mean if, if we're being honest most people watch it also for the pleasure part of it and you know you're doing it in the in the um the confidence of your own home and like Seth said it's such a taboo subject it's such a taboo thing that people don't want to talk about um but it's everywhere and the advertisements you see it you see women scantily clad you see the implications of sex so Adult entertainment and the erotica, I think people do it because of pleasure and it's it's something that can be done without judgment. So I do like that you said Seth, something I find to be true. We all we always like things we're not supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So it's like those little dirty little thing of, <laughs> ooh, I wanna, you know. So even though, even if you're not getting total pleasure from it, it just feels guilty and, and dirty. So like <laughs> I have watched it, right? I'm the kind of the prude of the two. But I have watched it. I do watch it sometimes. I look at it. It's the thing you just like a bad car accident. You don't want to turn away. It's like, I can't look. But <laughs> you just feel like, you know. But you like looking. You like looking. And then, I mean, you know, kid, children, even from two, three, four, you'll see them start to play with themselves, touch themselves, and do that. And Tiff, you did that because I'm talking loud, or you just did that? No, no, my earring was, was piercing my No, because that's our little cue. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, children, you see them at, they call it like the phallic age where they like to touch themselves, play with themselves. And we kind of teach them that it's wrong. Like, don't do that. Get your hand away. Like I've raised boys. I'm not going to out them. I'm not going to tell their business, but I had three boys and I went through those stages of, 
looking and seeing them doing the Al Bundy, you know, with their hand in their pants and just sitting there. And I'm like, that, you know, we, so we are very phallic beings, like to touch ourselves, like to do that. But it's definitely, I'm, I appreciate you saying that. It's sort of that taboo. Uh, well, I'll, I'll say I've always encouraged not, I mean, everyone know, who knows who my son is, but I have an eight-year-old and a 23-year-old and I've always encouraged self-pleasure because if you don't know what you like, then how can someone else please you if you don't know? <laughs> so yeah. it's, like, yeah. it's, the, it's the most natural thing, so. <laughs> and we do so, tend to live in a society where people, uh, don't know what uh brings them uh pleasure but then they uh they sort of get upset with their partner yes. for not being able to uh, satisfy them fully and i'm like well you never figured out uh, what it is that satisfies you you haven't been able to express it to your partner so the only person you can actually be uh upset with is yourself for not knowing yourself fully True. yeah and having somebody telling you having somebody telling you that you're happy. That's pretty much what, it, you know, they're like, you you good, you know, I, I hooked you up. And you're like, um, actually, I walked away a little bit hungry. <laughs> um, so for you, I know you have four children. I don't know their ages. What are their ages? Um, I have two that are uh, 21 uh, and then 12 and nine. Okay, so which leads me to our second question, which is what? do your family and friends think of, you know, what you do? Um, my uh, family and friends, they uh, know what uh, what I'm writing. The children, not, well, the younger children, not so much. And the older children, they know, but I've sort of forbade them from actually. <laughs> uh, I'm like, you can you're at an age where you can read uh, erotic books, you can watch movies and stuff like that, just not mine. So, <laughs> so they're aware, they're uh, as supportive as you can be of uh, something that you are not reading yourself, but they are definitely um, recommending it to other people, oh, which okay. is great as well. Mm -hmm. okay. I like that. Oh, like so you kind of tabooed them. I also have some older relatives who are, I thought that since they're older and they're very deep in the uh, church, that it would be um, a little harder to get them on board. But <laughs> remarkably, they have been the most gung-ho about, uh, about this path. Yeah. Which uh, you know raises a lot of interesting questions about what um, the more religious people in our country do behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, the dirty little secrets they have. You know, we see it. We see the church ministers and stuff. They had that recent one. I think it was in the Republican vote. Party. Yeah, he, he got caught basically in a, a, a orgy. You know. <laughs> They'd yeah. be pressed. So it's got to come out somewhere. It's going to come out the front or the back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so that, I mean, and that, that does raise an interesting um, question because I, I know a lot of times within the church, and we won't get into that, but within the, the church, um, there's a lot of rules that are supposedly supposed to be followed. And in one of our episodes, the one, I, I believe it was, it's the one on marriage. When we talk about that, one of the things that's so important to a relationship is sex. And, and in a church, they don't really give counseling on what the expectations are for what mm -hmm. you want to have in your sexual life. And that's mm -hmm. one of the most basic parts of life and your marriage. So, um, you know, so they, they may be using your books as an outlet to, to express themselves and just, you know, hey, you're, you're doing a, a, a service. So when I hung out, <laughs> I when I hung so. out, I, I, I'm, I'm glad you, you know, at least, people are, you know, making people aware that you do have a body and you are human. I remember when we were in church early on, you get people saying things like oral sex was wrong. Um, if you do that, it's a sin, but then there's the bed is undefiled. So it was kind of contradictory and yeah. you left people frustrated and confused when really it's your own personal decision between you and the person you're with. You can't have three people in there, you know, telling you what should make you happy. Again, back to you should be happy based on this or that. <laughs> what you looking at, Ted? I was like, you can't have three people in there? Why not? Oh, well, but, you know, 
I'll let you choose to. Better? Are you better. 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 Okay. <laughs> Somebody getting cheated. Somebody <laughs> gonna get cheated. <laughs> but I do have a question for you, Steph, about the female point of view. So we haven't gotten to read all of your books, but I do want to know how do you gather the females? point of view when you're expressing the female side of your book so her pleasure or her um you know interest how do you gather that point of view because obviously you're you're a guy so i don't, I don't know if you oh, i, don't well, think I find you that the uh, the best way to do that is the same way you would do it when you have a partner in the uh, bedroom you ask mm -hmm. questions <laughs> like uh you, you actually ask women what they actually like instead of you know going to your laptop or going into the bedroom and just assuming that you know what's best for someone else yes. and I, I think it's really important because I, I it was a very uh, one of the first lessons I had to learn uh, growing up as a sexual being is that everyone is different it's not just that men are different from women every single partner you have is going to be different mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can't go into that bedroom saying, okay, well, X, Y, Z worked with the last person I was with. So I'm just going to keep doing that with every single person I'm with after that. The second person may not like X, Y, and Z. They are strictly an A, B, C type of person. And you need to uh, recognize that what works for one or even works for a handful of people is not going to work for everybody. And I know a lot of people, a lot of young people in particular, they'll go into a sexual situation. Like I'm just gonna do the same thing that I know has been proven to work in the past. I'm like, well, what you lived for a while and have actually been with more partners, you'll realize that the world is not as simple as you think it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What We're works for legends. one person, yeah. yeah. What works for one person or one one man or woman doesn't work for another right. person. So you have to find that spot. And the the best way I like what you said about the the asking. The best way to do it is to ask. Or I mean, asking is the best way. But then you can also tell from body language sometimes when you're doing something that isn't working. If you're reading and in tune with your partner, sometimes you can see and tell. So the yeah. asking first, like you said, Steph, I like that. Uh, but also be in tune with your partner to to know, hey, this. I mean, look at his face or look at her face. It's mm -hmm. like just like and, or they're moaning way too much. Like, oh yes, this is great, and you're like, this is fake. <laughs> like, I, I've, I had a conversation with a male friend, and we were talking about the importance of. I mean, because in church you're raised, wait till you get married to have sex. Mm -hmm. So if you wait till you get married, you don't necessarily know what the person likes or doesn't like. So we were talking mm -hmm. about the importance of just being honest. Hey, I don't believe in this. I believe in that. I want this. I want that. Because it's unfair to tie somebody down for a lifetime and you're not willing to come outside <laughs> of missionary position or you <laughs> like it only go get out you know you you only like that and, you, and you are stuck with this person forever and so it's best to just have those conversations i think what happens in our culture we tend to have sexual activity before we get to know the person so we meet date one date two boom you're in the bed and you've already given away a piece of yourself to somebody you may not even wind up with and you wind up in a situation that you don't even like you're not happy with it's best to just have the conversation like you said i totally for it, all for it. Um, yeah, but I, I was raised as a uh, Jehovah's Witness as a okay. uh, child, and I remember um, right when puberty was starting, uh, one of the uh, one of the el well, one of the uh, sisters in the uh, church in the Kingdom Hall, she said that uh, talking to the teenagers that it is best to not have sex out of wedlock. It's better if you, if you cannot wait to just marry anyone so wow. that the, whatever <laughs> sex that you do have would be within wedlock. And I'm like, that, even as a teenager, I'm like, that sounds ridiculous. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're starting these marriages that are based on solely your desire to have sex with someone and then you're locking them into this thing 
and then you're going to judge them maybe a year, maybe five years, maybe 10 years down the line yeah. when they realize that the only thing that they had in common was the fact that they actually wanted to have sex. Yeah. Wow. This is something that personally I feel needs to change. Yeah. Like you cannot, we have a, a situation where 50% of marriages are ending in divorce. And I'm wondering how many of those divorces come from the fact that these people didn't know each, didn't know each other. And their church and their kingdom hall and their what have you was telling them, don't have sex out of wedlock. Do what you have to do so that you don't have sex out of wedlock. And then eventually it falls apart because that's what a marriage without a good foundation does. And it eventually will fall apart. Yeah. And and I think with another thing that you, you were saying is that you, you we have to realize that people evolve as well. Your your feelings, your thoughts, your likes, your dislikes, they evolve as well. So if you don't have that foundation where you can discuss things with your partner and say, you know, I used to like this, but I don't like it like that anymore. And I like this now, then that will be a problem as well. So just imagine getting married and you don't really know the person. You can't really express yourself. And then five years down the line, something changes within yourself or within the, your partner and you can't discuss that. So that's a big, big issue. I know... I I had a question about the um I don't know if Cindy did you have did you have um anything about the the characters that that no, um he kind of answered it you know on the okay. other question that you asked about how do you get your characters so you just said you pretty much just asked the questions instead of just googling and researching you pretty much so that kind of answered that question um so I, well, think, we, I know you had another I, I I um I thought you had um a question about whether or not it was based on <laughs> oh yeah 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 that part I said based on you <laughs> um, people you know the, the fic fictional characters in you your book. are people you know yes a lot of the books actually are based on uh me and people that I know yeah. uh Bayesian <laughs> Heat, especially because uh, it's about a uh, couple, uh, Seth and his wife, going on a vacation to mm -hmm. uh, Barbados <laughs> and bringing along That's a funny. few of their friends to this uh, resort that uh, okay. caters to people's uh, sexual desires. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely based on a trip that my wife and I took to Barbados. So like a really uh, nice road trip. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had my cup, my teacup, girl. I'm like, what a happy ending. I had a look. Let's mm -hmm. hear some more. Well, uh, you know, like, a road trip with a happy ending. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, several happy endings, honestly. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but, but now I, I have a question about um, the relationship and the difference between what I was speaking about, the adult entertainment industry, specifically the pornography industry versus prostitution now if you look at it prostitution is illegal and you're pretty much doing the same thing that you would be doing if you were on film so I always say if I was a prostitute what I would do is say pull out your camera when the cop comes because now we're making porn versus <laughs> being a prostitute so Except they probably ask for to see your license like they have uh, permits okay. and stuff that they are supposed to fill out but um, I think what that wrong is that with the, uh, What wrong with her? <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to ask, do you see, um, how is it different? And I guess that's part of the answer. How is it different than prostitution? What I mean, what do you you guys think? Is it different or is it pretty much the same just without the camera, like I said? Oh, and the licensing and all <laughs> She needs a license. Um, well, I know that uh, law enforcement has been trying to... Uh, I mean, prostitution is legal, is illegal, and law enforcement has been trying to shut that down. But honestly, they've spent a, a lot of time trying to shut down pornography, which is legal as well. They keep trying to institute newer laws in order to get it shut down. Uh, there was one of the uh, stories that I, I go back to is uh, Tracy Lords, a uh, adult film actress from, I think, the 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that she was underage. She was not 18 yet, but she had a fake ID that was allegedly given to her by the state of California. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, if she has a legal ID that says that she's 18, mm -hmm. 
why did the uh, United States government come in there and start arresting people who performed with her? Like they did their due diligence. Right. The mistake right. was that the government gave a underage girl an ID saying that she was 18. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, did you give her this ID on purpose mm -hmm. so that you would have an excuse oh, to arrest yeah. adult film actors and actresses and try try to drive yet another nail into the coffin of this pornography uh, that you've been trying to stamp out for who knows how many years now. Yeah, I saw the documentary on that. That was like a big, she, she really got a lot of, even from the industry itself, they really came after her. And then she started pointing fingers at, I forgot the other lady's name, I saw her documentary. She was another big name out there. She kind of like named names and stuff. Tracy Lords did. Um, I, I, you know what I saw from the California. Some of the propositions in California, they were pen, They were saying that it was because of the high disease rate that had started. A lot of people, you know, were saying that they wanted to end it because you're getting diseases. Because a lot of the um, producers and makers of it didn't want the men to wear condoms. They don't want to, people don't want to watch a video and the women, the actresses were saying they were getting fired when they insisted on a condom because people don't want to watch it if it's not genuinely natural, raw sex. Yeah. So that was one of the things that I saw about it. Um, listen, if you do, if you ban it, they're going to find another way to get around it. People are going to film it. A lot of them now, they've got those little, I mean, we're in the instant age now. They're doing it on their phone, making this, I mean, and they're making them clips. So it's like a five minute clip getting 50 million views. The only thing I'm seeing now a lot of is that it's getting nastier and nastier in terms of what's um, fun to do. So it's like one girl, 90 guys, let's see how that works out, spitting on you and doing all of this stuff. And so it makes it, they're kind of, they're kind of to me, screwing themselves out of the industry because you're making it more vulgar, more. You know, and then also saying that a lot of the girls are in there trafficked and are, you know, are have a pimp forcing them, not seeing the profit. So there's a lot of reasons. I mean, I don't want to just dismiss it and be like they're trying to hinder people from making those movies. Yeah, there's a lot of raunchiness to it. You know, it's more than just two consenting adults. Um, which kind of segues me to my Tiff, you have something else about that or you want me to go? Um, no, I I mean no, no. Okay, so it kind of segued me into my question about, you know how they link, um, uh-oh, what is this? Sorry, we had a- uh, Oh, yeah, a message, like pop up right in the middle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, there's links between porn and um, sex, sexual violence. Do you think there's a link there? Like they link video game violence to video, to violence overall or rap to violence. So sex is kind of linked, sexual crime is linked to pornography or erotic art. What do you think about that? Um, my thing is, I don't think that uh, you can blame uh, the pornography for the uh, sexual violence any more than you can blame television for uh, the street violence that you see outside. Uh, and I know that people would like to make that comparison, like, oh, why are we making uh, shows like Empire and Power? It's glorifying the violence. And I'm like, 99% of people can watch an episode of Power mm -hmm. and not go outside mm -hmm. and shoot somebody. Yeah. So it, the, the problem is not the entertainment itself. The problem is that there's a, a section of our society and I'm not going to go into how big or how little that section is, but there's a section of our society that is very, very troubled. And we live in a country that instead of doing what's necessary in order to help those people and get them straight, essentially, we'd rather just point the finger at other things. Like, oh, this person went into a school and shot, thing, and shot a bunch of people. Oh, he must have been playing video games. I'm like, well... How about the fact that his mother also told you that he had mental health issues and you refused to cover his medication? Right. We're not pointing the finger at that. It's like, oh, he played video games. Yep. Or I this person know. is a sexual predator. Oh, he looked at a couple of porno movies. I'm like, well, 
people warned you about his behavior way before he discovered porn, way before he discovered video games, and you ignored it. Yeah. And what America does a lot is that you'll have a problem, everyone is telling you that there's a problem, and then you're ignoring it until it blows up. And then when it blows up, you don't want to take responsibility for the fact that you ignored it for so long, mm -hmm. so you start looking for people to blame. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Just point. add that with the insurrection. That was a problem. And yes. everyone knew it was growing. And everyone kept saying, this is a problem that America is growing. You need to fix this. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. They, they said it. No, they never run on the Capitol. And it's like, oh, who's to blame for this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's 100%. 100 percent accurate 100%. when i mean when you when you everything that you said i agree 100 percent because we have we have um indicators we have um, our own free will and i watch power empire i watch that and i never feel after the episode to like going out and shooting someone or or dealing drugs or anything like that but there are indicators that tell us way beforehand just like you said with the insurrection on um tuesday there were indicators they were it was all online i mean i have friends who posted certain things and i'm i'm seeing it so if i'm seeing that you mean to tell me the fbi who said that white supremacy was one of the biggest threats didn't notice if this was an isis attack or and i'm sorry to veer off topic but you mentioned it but if it was an isis attack or if it was something that was like well i guess not because 9 11 happened and they kind of ignored that too but that's a whole other thing but we back to the the porn let, let me just the the adult entertainment let me just say people have their own um what do you call it their own free will and and remember back in the 90s 80s 90s they they started trying to blame violence on the rap culture and i mean it's not yeah they may listen to this or they may watch this but it's not the direct cause like you said and i mean there's so many behind the scenes issues that need to be addressed so then that way they're they're well enough to not take action when they see these things I, I, I mean, totally agree. They, they wanted to blame rap culture instead of uh, blaming uh, poverty in certain first in certain parts of America. They wanted they didn't want to blame the drugs that were being filtered into our communities. Don't want to don't want to take responsibility for that. Like oh, you listen to uh, a couple of songs. That's the real reason this is going on. Yeah, yeah. It's not the uh, over policing. It's not police brutality. None of that. It's the fact that you listen to NWA. That's that's surely what led to all of this. Well, the thing is, I think you you can't you can't pin any one anything on one thing, but you can't negate other things because there's a possibility of something else. So, let's say rap music had its influence on how they dress and how they this and how they act. Their bravado, because it tells you in the song, you know, shoot the police. F, you know, and I have my feelings about the police, but it could feed something but there's plenty of things that can feed a monster and you can't just say it's one thing i believe depravity like you said what's in you is if you bump a cup what's in you is going to come out but if you're watching something all the time that's what's feeding the monster that we can't say that has nothing to do with it but we can't blame it for having everything to do with it that's what i think i just think you can't blame one thing but i think that they are you know, you plant a seed, somebody else waters, somebody else waters, and then next thing you know, you have a flower. So that insurgency that happened, by the, by the time this is out to, it'll be a Wednesday, maybe two or three weeks ago. But the insurgency that we all know happened at that time was fed by that monster. But he fed it over three years or four years. You know, it was fed maybe six years or 10 years or maybe since the inception of the country. Who knows, you know, I, mean, much. You, I mean, you can definitely argue that uh, that there's sort of a chicken and chicken in the egg situation there. Um, yeah. pe some people are already troubled, and they just intentionally go looking for the thing that's going to feed, feed the, monster. the monster that's already inside of them. So, like pornography ranges from things that are super vanilla to things that are very vulgar. But every single person has a choice as to which thing they're going to look at. And if you're the kind of person who's like, I, I just want to see the stuff that involves sexual violence instead of the stuff which there's a lot of, that's just two couples enjoying themselves. The question is, 
what was it about you that made you seek out that instead of this? <laughs> agree, totally agree. Wow. So I think we are, I don't know how time we have to, I don't know if it's- No, we, we, have, we have enough. Um, let me just, let me ask, um, well, I, I kind of think we covered it because I was going to ask if the you being an erotic film artist affects um, your sex life. But while you while you're explaining that, I, I do want you to let us know in the last few minutes about your books and if you want to plug like your, one of your recent or best sellers or something that you have in the works as well. So Oops. actually. Uh... Actually, uh, Asian Heat is actually my uh, my most popular book. And two days ago, I released the uh, second part to it, Asian Heat 2, Stormy Weather. Uh, our couples are still in Barbados. And a hurricane is actually bearing down on the island at the uh, time. And while the hurricane is bearing down on the island, some secrets that they've all been keeping from each other mm -hmm. are starting to come to light. Okay. And now that those secrets are coming out, secrets will kill a relationship faster than just about anything else. And those secrets are coming out and people are not handling it well. And they're not, again, they're not communicating. These secrets have come out. They're not communicating with each other. And now these couples have to decide whether or not they're going to fix these relationships that they've uh, cared for and fostered all of these years, or if they're all going to leave this island on separate planes. <laughs> oh, okay. And so okay, that's part two. That's part two, right? So um, yeah. Beijing, you said it's coming out or it's already out? Uh, it's already it's out. Released. It was yeah, uh, released two days ago. Okay. Two days ago. Okay. So where can they find your, your books and um, your purchase if they're interested, if our audience is interested. Oh, well, uh, all of the books are available on uh, Amazon right now. So you can go to Amazon, look up uh, Seth Moses Kane, and all seven books are there. Or you can actually get it on your Kindle, because I know a lot of people don't get physical books anymore. Right. I mean, I still do. I prefer to <laughs> hold a physical book in my hand. But if you're the person who does ebooks, it's available in ebook as well. Okay. Wow. Well, Seth, we thank you so much for being on with us. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you. I love being here. I mean, you guys, if you're interested in, in taking a look at his books, it's Seth Moses Kane, S E F T H Moses Kane. We'll actually put his name in the title so you'll see it. But um, it, it's been a pleasure discussing some of the male erotica with um, point of view with you and just mm -hmm. understanding. And, and, and discussing the political nature of it of it all. So we appreciate you being on and we, we thank you. You guys can always find oh. us if you're watching the video on YouTube. It's Polly Chicks and everything else, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We're on two Polly Chicks. Um, we're under two Polly Chicks. So follow us and we have much, much more, more to come. Bye and, guys. Uh, Gmail. Don't forget our Gmail tip. Oh, two two Polly Chicks. <laughs> two Polly Chicks at gmail.com. Thank you, Seth, for joining us today. Bye, guys. Thank we you hope for you enjoyed me. the show. Leave a comment below. We thank you guys for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.